Hello poetry lovers and poetry curious. Today I'm reading to you from the language of life, which was edited by James Haba. And I'm going to read to you at the Cemetery Walnut Grove Plantation, South Carolina, 1989 by Lucille Clifton, who is an African-American, or was, she is deceased at this time. Among the rocks at Walnut Grove, your silence drumming in my bones, tell me your names. Nobody mentions slaves, and yet the curious tools shine with your fingerprints. Nobody mentions slaves, but somebody did this work, who had no guide, no stone, who molders under rock. Tell me your names, tell me your bashful names, and I will testify. The inventory lists 10 slaves, but only men were recognized. Among the rocks at Walnut Grove, some of these honored dead were dark, some of these dark were slaves, some of these slaves were women. Some of them did this honored work. Tell me your names, foremothers, brothers. Tell me your dishonored names. Here lies, here lies, here lies, here lies, here. So our randomized poetry element is tone, which is kind of tricky. I feel almost like some of it is kind of reverent, um, but a lot of it so it kind of swings between reverence and facts, only the facts. Um, also, there's a sense here of invocation. She's definitely trying to invoke these people who have been erased or made invisible. Um, tell me your names, tell me your bashful names, and I will testify. But then we have things like the inventory list, lists 10 slaves, but only men were recognized. And then this section that is just a sort of a logic sequence. Among the rocks at Walnut Grove, some of these honored dead were dark, some of these dark were slaves, some of these slaves were women. Um, <clears throat> but then of course, using the word honors repeatedly. Um, and dishonored. Uh, to me, again, there's a sense of reverence. There's, is there, I mean, it's about doing what is right, okay? To the extent that one can in this situation. Doing what is right. And I think it isn't until we hit the here, but, but there isn't a sense of, there's a sense of wanting to acknowledge, again, to honor a sense of reverence for the people who did the work, but I feel like there's, it doesn't come across as justice seeking until you reach the end. So you have here lies, here lies, here lies, and then, so you have here lies, and then there's a blank, and here lies, there's a blank, here lies, there's a blank. So. Um, in other words, nothing follows the here lies, as in a gravestone that has no name on it. And then the last word is here, H-E-A-R. 
So here lies, here lies, here lies, here. Listen. Listen to what is not here. Listen to what is not here. However, it is also here lies, as in there are lies here. <laughs> there, there are not things being told. There are lies. Um, and so there is an aspect of exposing the lies. Among the rocks at Walnut Grove, you're silent, drumming in my bones. Tell me your names. Nobody mentioned slaves. So it's as though at this plantation, there's a tour and nobody wants to mention the fact that there were slaves there. So you, this inventory that lists 10 slaves may be research she did after a tour, thinking there must have been slaves here. Why aren't they being mentioned? So <clears throat> now, all right, so here we go. I'm going, there's, this book contains interviews with the poets. And so after this poem, I'm just seeing this now. I mean, I've read this whole book many years ago, but <clears throat> at this moment, I see <laughs> um, that Lucille Clift Clifton starts to talk about the poem. It says, well, let me tell you what happened with that poem. I went to Walnut Grove Plantation in South Carolina in 1989, and I was the only person of color on the tour. Um, it's a wonderful 2,000 acres, but on the tour there was no mention of slaves. The plantation had the original furniture and the guide talked about the difficulty of the work for a small family, but there was no mention of slavery. I mean, really, 2,000 acres? <laughs> but anyway, now I'm nosy. I want to know everything when I travel to give readings, all the gossip, everything. I like to know what happened here. So I always ask about the people who were here before these people. And then the uncomfortable question always is, where are they now? <laughs> um, well, Walnut Grove Plantation has the family burying, gro burying ground. And on the sides of the roped off path leading to that burying ground, there are crosses and rocks and other things sitting on edge that to me clearly mark the graves of slaves. So I asked, why don't you mention slaves? The first answer was, maybe the guide didn't want to embarrass you. Well, I said, uh, I'm not a slave. I don't know why he would think I'd be embarrassed. Then I asked again, and the answer was, maybe they didn't have any. Well, they had 2,000 acres in South Carolina in the early part of the 19th century. Be serious. <laughs> When I suggested that the guide check the inventory because slaves were considered property and, and were often inventory, they discovered that the plantation had an inventory of 10 slaves. There you go. But they might have had more, just as it's in the poem, because women weren't counted. Now, well, I had to find out about that. <laughs> I mean, some things say, hey, like, no. Then I learned that the women were not considered valuable enough to inventory. I definitely wanted to write about that. There you go. There you go. Background on the poem. Um, so... I guess we covered tone to the extent that I feel able to cover tone in this poem. So we're going to go on to the survey. So is this poem more thinking, actions, or observations? It is... It's... Again, it's, it's kind of reportage. I'm going to say I'm going to say it's mostly thinking. Is this poem more representative or abstract? 
I'm going to say representative because she is talking about people. People are things. It's representative. Is this poem obvious, subtle, or does it leave you scratching your head? I think it's pretty obvious. Uh, does this poem progress in a linear way or a discursive way? Um, I would say it's a little discursive, uh, but I would call it pleasantly discursive. It is not a wild ride, but it also doesn't lose me. Because we start out among the rocks at Walnut Grove, um, and she's asking someone that we don't know yet to tell me your names. And so we don't quite, we can assume by the title, at least if you're from the US, you can probably assume by the title that she's on a tour at a place like this. It says, nobody mentioned slaves and yet the curious tools. So we're, it's almost like the discursive process going through her mind. And then that research of the inventory. So, and then that last part is fairly linear. Like I said, that, that stepping us through logic there. Um, but I'm going to call it discursive but pleasantly discursive. It's, it's trying to show us a little bit about her coming to awareness of the situation here, or maybe forcing some of the other people present to also come into reality and awareness. So what fiction category is this poem most similar to? I'm going to say contemporary literary fiction, this kind of reckoning with the past and making sure that it isn't erased. Um, I would not call it historical because it's really not about the history, it's about the present and what the present does with the history. Um, which nonfiction category is this poem most similar to? Well, that, that in fact, would be history. Um, it could, it, yeah, could it be memoir? It could potentially be memoir, but I would say history. History from a point of the present. Uh, what musical category is this poem most similar to? going to say, I don't know, where's, nobody mentioned slaves and, who's telling your beautiful names? So what I'm kind of thinking about is choir or a chant. Um, or folk. Yeah. I don't know why I'm leaning in those directions, but that's where I'm leaning. What sort of visual art style is this poem most similar to? I'm actually going to say a landscape. Just a landscape showing the two different types of graves. That's what I would go with. In a word or a brief phrase, what would you say is primarily being communicated by this poem? Well, this is important to be curious, for one thing, from what, just what she said, but that it's important to um, recognize 
those who were erased to attempt to honor the people who are being erased by history. Whitewashed history. I think there are probably other things being said, but I think that that's the main thing that it talks about. Specifically slaves, but I think uh, she's the kind of person who any place that she, <laughs> where it was so obvious that something was being erased, <laughs> that uh, she would seek to find out more. Um, okay. Anything else that I want to sit, to share about this poem? I think I already did. I talked a little bit about the, the here lies aspect and that's it's an interesting poem until you hit the here lies and you have all those blanks and the fact that that here there are lies. In other words, there are things that are being erased. They're not being said. The, um, you know, you're culpable for your omissions sort of thing. Uh, and then at the end, at the very last word being hear, H-E-A-R, as in hear, listen, try to uh, bring these people's names back. I don't think on inventory they gave people's names either, if I recall, I don't know. Um, I've watched like genealogy shows and stuff, but I, and I, but I can't remember if they just give numbers. In any case, I found it once I got to that part in particular, I thought that was kind of the twist of the knife, maybe. Um, so I will try to find this online as I do with the poems these days and uh, if I find it, there will be a link to it down below. And I've had uh, poems by Lucille Clifton on here before, but you know there'll be a link to something about her as well. So that's it for At the Cemetery Walnut Grove Plantation, South Carolina, 1918.